American Express currently offers 34 different credit cards. So needless to say, deciding between them can be a little bit challenging. So today let's make the ultimate American Express credit card tier list to help you get the most out of your credit cards. All right, let's jump right into it. What is going on everyone? I hope you are all having a fantastic day. So we've got a lot to cover in this video. So let's start by grouping these cards into some categories to make things a little bit more manageable. First of all, American Express has 17 personal cards, 14 business cards, and three corporate cards at the time of recording this video, plus the Centurion card, but we won't be covering that one today. And while there are some slight differences between the personal and business versions of a lot of these products, today I want to mainly focus on the 17 personal card options that American Express offers. I've also reviewed a lot of these products individually, so I will link to some of those down below the like button. All right, so among the 17 personal credit cards that American Express currently offers, some give you cash back in the form of rewards, while others give you points that can be redeemed in a number of different ways, including travel. So let's start off with the free cash back products and work our way up to some of the more insane products that American Express offers. By by far, my favorite free credit card from American Express is the Blue Cash Everyday Card. This has no annual fee, currently offers a $200 signup bonus when you spend $2,000 in the first six months, and gives you really great cash back, like 3% on groceries, 3% at US retail purchases, 3% on gas, and 1% on all other purchases. It also gives you additional credits towards things like Disney Plus and Home Chef, but that 3% cash back is capped at $6,000 in purchases each year. And beyond that, you're just gonna earn 1%. And there is also a foreign transaction fee. So I'll be putting the everyday card in the B tier. Next up, we've got the cash magnet, which is much more simple, offering 1.5% unlimited cash back on all of your purchases and the same $200 cash signup bonus when you spend $2,000 in the first few months. But despite the fact that this also has no annual fee, it's hard to get excited about one. 0.5% back in my opinion, when there are a number of products that give you 2% unlimited cash back with no annual fee. So because of that, I'll be putting this card in the C tier. The third product on today's list is the regular American Express everyday credit card, which in place of cash back gives you two points per dollar on groceries and one point on all other purchases. You also get a 10,000 point bonus when you spend $2,000 in the first six months. And depending on how you redeem those points, they should be worth Worth a bare minimum of $100. Again, this card has no annual fee, and you can even earn a 20% bonus point boost if you use your card 20 times or more in a statement cycle. Nothing to get too excited about here, so I'll also be putting this one in the C tier, but don't worry, we are rapidly working our way towards some of the best credit cards on the market. The next card with no annual fee is actually one of my favorite products from American Express across the board right now, and that would be the standard Hilton Honors card. Now, there's a few more premium versions of this product that we'll talk about later, but even though this does have no annual fee, it still offers an 80,000 Hilton Honors Point bonus when you spend $1,000 in the first three months, seven points per dollar on Hilton hotels and resorts, five points on US restaurants, supermarkets, and gas stations, and three points on all other purchases. You also get complimentary Hilton Honors silver status and no foreign transaction fees, and while Hilton honors points are only worth half as much as American Express points, those are still some pretty crazy bonus categories. So for no annual fee, I'll be putting this one in the A tier. That brings us to the last American Express product that has no annual fee, and that would be the Delta Sky Miles Blue American Express card. Similar to the Hilton Honors card that we just looked at, there are four different versions of the Delta Sky Miles card, but the blue version has no annual fee and gives you a 10,000 mile bonus when you spend $500 in the first three months, as well as two miles on dining and restaurants, two miles per dollar on Delta purchases, and one point or mile on all other purchases. Delta miles are the same as points, and again, with no foreign transaction fee, this is a decent product that I'll be putting in the B tier. Let's be honest, nothing too exciting so far, but now let's move into the intermediate credit cards and ultimately work our way up to those crazy high annual fee, but high reward options. 
Sticking with the Delta Sky Miles cards for a second, the next option above the free blue version is the Delta Sky Miles Gold American Express card. Now, they do waive the annual fee currently for the first year as an intro offer, but after that, you're looking at $99 per year, which compared to what we're about to talk about later in this video is not that bad. This card gives you a 40,000 mile bonus when you spend $1,000 in the first three months, as well as two miles per dollar on dining, groceries, and all Delta purchases and one mile on all other purchases. You also get a free checked bag on all Delta flights and a $100 annual Delta flight credit, which sounds great, but you only get that after you spend $10,000, which is a little bit ridiculous in my opinion. That being said, if you do frequently fly with Delta, then depending on what ticket class you purchase, that free checked bag alone could pay for the $99 annual fee. So while it's not my favorite product because it is airline specific, it's still a decent product for sure that I'll be putting in the B tier. There is one more Delta Sky Miles card in this mid-tier category, and that would be the Delta Sky Miles Platinum American Express card. This gives you a 50,000 mile bonus and a 5,000 medallion qualification mile bonus when you spend $2,000 in the first three months, as well as three miles per dollar on Delta purchases and hotels, two miles per dollar on dining and grocery stores, and one mile per dollar on all other purchases. You are going to get some premium benefits like Delta Sky Club access, free checked baggage, and priority boarding, and even an annual companion certificate allowing you to bring someone with you along for the ride. But at $250 per year, I think that there's a much better option that we're going to talk about next, so I'll be putting this one in the C tier. You've probably noticed this by now, but I'm personally not a huge fan of brand-specific credit cards, such as the Delta Sky Miles card, which is why I love this this next product so much, and that would be the American Express Gold Card. This is actually the first American Express card that I ever opened myself, and I absolutely love my gold card. I use it and carry it with me every single day. And while it also has a fairly high annual fee of $250 per year, I think it is an annual fee that is quite easy to justify. First of all, they offer you a sign-up bonus that usually ranges from 60,000 points to 90,000 points or more when you spend just a few thousand dollars in the first couple months. But you're also looking at four points per dollar at restaurants and grocery stores, three points per dollar on flights booked through American Express, and one point per dollar on all other purchases, not to mention the $120 dining credit and $120 Uber cash credit, which combined almost entirely pay for the annual fee on their own. I personally spend way too much money on dining, which is why I'll be putting this product in the A tier. Rounding out our first half of cards would be the American Express Everyday Preferred card, which is the more premium version of the Everyday card that we looked at earlier. This version is $95 per year, but gives you 15,000 points when you spend $2,000 in the first six months, offers you three points per dollar on groceries on up to $6,000 in purchases each year, two points on gas, and one point on everything else. Plus, if you use this card 30 times or more in a statement cycle, which is just one month, you get 50% extra points, which is pretty substantial. Not bad, but at $95 per year, American Express actually has a much better option that we haven't yet looked at, so be sure to stick around for that one, but I'll be putting this card in the C tier. All right, we are officially halfway and have a pretty balanced list so far, but we've still got the best S tier products to come, as well as a D tier product that absolutely sucks, so be sure to stick around for those. Sticking with the $95 annual fee category, Next is the mid-tier option from the Hilton Honors cards, which is the Hilton Honors Surpass credit card. For 95 bucks per year, you get a 130,000 point bonus when you spend $2,000 in the first three months, as well as 12 points per dollar on Hilton hotels and resorts, six points on dining, grocery stores, and gas stations, and three points on all other purchases. Plus, you get complimentary Hilton gold status and 10 priority pass visits each year, which for an average traveler should be plenty. At that low annual fee, you're getting some pretty premium benefits, so I'm gonna be putting this card in the A tier. Next up, we have by far my favorite credit card in this $95 category, and perhaps my favorite credit card across the board right now, and that is the American Express Blue Cash Preferred Card. This is the bigger brother of the Blue Cash Everyday card that we talked about earlier, but for $95 per year, it is well worth it. Right now, they will waive the annual fee for the first year 
and give you a $300 cash bonus when you spend $3,000 in the first six months. You also get 6% cash back on grocery stores, US streaming services, 3% on transit, including ride-sharing platforms, 3% on gas, and 1% back on all other purchases, plus a $120 Equinox Plus credit. The only gripe I have with this card is that there is still a 2.7% foreign transaction fee, but assuming you are mostly using this card in the US, it's honestly a no-brainer. And for the first time today, I'll be putting this card in the S tier. All right, we have officially moved out of the intermediate category and now have five of the most expensive and arguably best credit cards from American Express remaining. Before we get to those though, we have to talk about the worst product on today's list, and that is the American Express Serve card. You've probably never heard of this card before, and technically it's a prepaid debit card. And while it absolutely does serve a purpose for very specific scenarios, no pun intended, if you are not able to qualify for a credit card, then maybe it makes sense. However, it charges a monthly fee of seven to eight dollars, but offers very limited benefits. So unless you absolutely cannot qualify for any other credit card, I would personally avoid this one at all cost. So I'll be putting the surf card in the D tier. Now that we've got that out of the way, things are about to get very expensive. The only reasonably priced card remaining is the American Express green card, which costs $150 per year, gives you a 40,000 point bonus when you spend $2,000 in the first six months, and also gives you three points at restaurants, transit, and travel purchases, and one point on all other purchases. You also get a $100 credit put towards your clear membership each year, plus a $100 lounge buddy credit. So considering this card has no foreign transaction fee, I think it's reasonably priced for a frequent traveler. So I'll be putting it in the A tier. Hold on to your wallet because next we have the most premium version of the Hilton Honors card, and that would be the Hilton Honors Aspire card coming in at $450 per year. For that whopping annual fee, you get a 150,000 Hilton point bonus when you spend $4,000 in the first three months, 14 points per dollar on Hilton hotels and resorts, seven points per dollar on select travel and dining purchases, and three points per dollar on all other purchases. Now, I wanna remind you that Hilton points are only worth half as much as a standard credit card points, but you do also get complimentary Hilton diamond status and a $250 Hilton statement credit. So assuming you'd be staying at a Hilton property at some point throughout the year if you have this card, then that lowers the effective annual fee to just $200. But for such a high annual fee, I think the next product is actually a much better option. So I'll be putting the Aspire card in the B tier. The next card is a direct competitor to the Hilton Honors cards, and that would be the Marriott Bonvoy Brilliant card, also coming in at $450 per year. This gives you a 75,000 point bonus when you spend $3,000 in the first three months, as well as six points per dollar on Marriott hotel purchases, three points on dining and flights, and two points on all other purchases. But the real benefit here is the $300 Marriott Bonvoy statement credits, one free night at a Marriott property, and $100 in Marriott Bonvoy property credits. So you'd really have to frequently stay at a Marriott property in order to justify this card, but if you do, it will easily pay for itself. And because of that, I'll be putting it in the A tier. All right, we are running out of space on our chart and running out of money to spend on premium credit cards. But before we get to the most expensive product on today's list, next up, we've got the most premium version of the Delta Sky Miles card, which is the Delta Sky Miles Reserve card. For $550 per year, you get to choose between metal or 70% recycled plastic, I guess because because 100% recycled plastic is too difficult, but you get a 50,000 mile bonus and 10,000 medallion qualification miles when you spend $3,000 in the first three months. Plus you get three points per dollar on all Delta purchases and one point on all other purchases. And also for those of you that are wondering, the medallion points is just Delta's loyalty program that basically upgrades you to premium status. So if you're trying to achieve medallion status with Delta, then this is kind of a cheat code in order to get there because you're also going to get 15,000 medallion miles on top of the regular signup bonus if you spend $30,000 per year on this card. Not only do you get access to the Delta Sky Club lounges, but you also get access to the American Express Centurion lounges. So that is a 
nice bonus. But that being said, for such a high annual fee, I just don't like the idea of being totally locked into the Delta system, and unless you live near a Delta hub or just frequently fly with Delta, then really it doesn't make a lot of sense, so I'll be putting this one in the C tier. And last, but certainly not least, coming in at a whopping $695 per year is of course the American Express Platinum Card. This card requires no introduction, but for that hefty annual fee, you're looking at a sign-up bonus of usually at least 100,000 points or more, as well as a ton of credits like a $200 hotel credit, a $240 digital entertainment credit, a $155 Walmart Plus credit, and the list goes on. Again, I've done a full review on this product, but if you add up all of the credits that they currently offer, it usually equates to nearly $1,500 in value. So even if you use a fraction of them, it shouldn't be too difficult to justify this annual fee. Plus, on top of that, you're looking at five points per dollar on all flights and hotels booked through American Express, and one point on all other purchases. Obviously, this card is geared towards travel fanatics like myself, but you need to carefully consider the various credits and point multipliers to make sure that you can actually justify that ridiculous annual fee. Personally, I don't think it's too difficult, and considering it gives you some of the most premium benefits in the industry, I'll be putting the Platinum card in the A tier. All right, that was a lot of information to cover in one short video, but in a nutshell, if you wanna stay on the low end in terms of cost, I'd go with the Blue Cash Preferred card. The Gold card is a great mid-tier option, and if you don't care how much your credit card costs and you're just looking for the most premium benefits possible, then I'd go with the Platinum card. I probably could have said all of that at the beginning of the video and saved both of us a lot of time, but as always, this is just my opinion, so I'd love to know what you think of the American Express credit cards down in the comment section below and what your favorite card currently is. Be sure to check out some of my favorite financial tools using those links down below the like button. And as always, thank you so much for your time. I really do appreciate it so much. Take it easy, and I'll see you in the next one.